In this video, what we're going to do is show you how to use dice on a 2D example. There's also videos for how to run dice in stereo um, to get the full field deformation uh, in X, Y, and Z. And then there's going to be a third video uh, to do tracking. But in this one, we're just going to do the 2D. Um, and to get the example files that we're going to use for this demonstration, go to the dice page um, and click on the um, dice code. Then go to releases. And in the releases, you'll see a bunch of files here uh, installers for the different operating systems like Mac and Windows. If you're using Linux, you've got to install Dice uh, from source enable, uh, before you can use it. But there's this examples.zip file that you should download. Um, and then once that's downloaded, go ahead and extract it to somewhere you're going to remember where it's at. And inside this folder, you'll see a bunch of different videos. So for this release, um, there's three of them. One's a 2D play with a hole that we'll use in this video. There's a stereo uh, example and one for uh, doing tracking. There might be more examples that get added to this folder, but at least these three should uh, be in any uh, version that you download. Uh, I'm also assuming that you've already installed Dice onto your machine. So we're using a Mac. We double click on this, download it, run the installer, uh, and then start Dice. And when it starts up, a couple things to notice about the interface. On the left side, here's where you select your files. You can either do this individually, um, where you would click on the load reference and then sort through the files and pick one. Uh, and then for the deformed images, you pick uh, your images uh, from the file selection menu. You can also do this uh, as a sequence of images. So here you might put in the prefix for a file name, and then it has an underscore and a bunch of uh, numbers to represent the frame index and that's how you would load that kind of image. And then there's also one for cine files, which comes from several uh, high-speed cameras that can record in this format. So those are the three options for how you would bring in your, your images. We're gonna select individually. Um, up here is where you can modify the view uh, of the images that you're looking at. And this section here is where you set up the regions of interest, and we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. Um, down here is where you see the console output from everything that's happening during the analysis. And on the right side, you've got all the options that you can use. So let's go ahead and load a reference image. We'll go back to our DIC examples, 2D plate with a hole in the images folder. We'll use the plate.ref, uh, plate underscore ref tiff as our reference image. And then once that loads, you'll see it shows up here in the in the display. This little yellow box here is a representative uh, subset size. So we've got the subset size set to 31. If we change it to be bigger, it shows us um, how that looks in the image. And the reason that this is important is because you want to have roughly three speckles um, per uh, subset is a good uh, rule of thumb. So we're going to increase this a little bit more to be in the roughly 33. These speckles are a little bit hard to, to see because they're done with a, a spray paint. Um, but uh, So this box here shows you um, how big your subset size shows up compared to the speckle size. A couple other things to note here. Um, we'll go ahead and load our deformed images. And in this case, we're going to do all of the images from 0 to 11. Click on those. If you hover over any of the images, you can see a preview of what they look like. In this case, they all look pretty similar, so it's difficult to tell one image from the other. Up here, there's a, a check mark in a circle here, and what that does is, given this SSIG threshold, it will automatically detect where the subsets should go and show you what they look like on the display here. If you adjust other things like the step size or the subset size, that will also be reflected here in these yellow dots. So there's some you can see that, that kind of come off the sample, but that's because the subset, you know, the window of the subset actually goes over the sample and there's enough contrast inside that subset for it to, for it to track. Some of the options here, um, we're using the subset-based full field um, option in this video, so we're going to see displacements that show up throughout the whole uh, sample. If you have objects of interest that you want to track in a video, um, or a set of frames, you would go to the tracking mode, but in this case we're using the full field. The initialization method is how 
um, the first uh, subsets get registered within the image. And the feature matching one uses the OpenCV feature matching um, uh, tool to locate where the subsets are in the reference and the deformed image for the first frame. If you were to go and use the field values one, the field values option is good. If you've got pretty close succession of images, there's not too much deformation that happens in between them. So you can start off with zero deformation, and then the next step is initialized with the answer from the first uh, step and so on and so forth in a sequential fashion. Uh, the neighbor values one is good if you have a region of the image where there's very little displacement, um, but there may be other areas where there's large displacements and there's a smooth transition in between. So it starts with the, the areas that have very little displacement and then it uses the neighbors and kind of marches in a space filling pattern uh, to complete. But the feature matching one is the most uh, robust of those. Uh, the shape functions here, you can turn different ones on and off. In this one, we're just gonna use translation uh, and normal stretch since there isn't gonna be much rotation happening and there isn't any shearing. This is just being pulled in axial tension uh, you can turn off the strain. This will use the virtual strain gauge um, to compute the strains for the images. The gauge size is automatically set to be increments of the step size. So you can see there are increments of 15. If you change the step size, the gauge size increments will change down here. This option here to emit the text output, there's two output files that come uh, in the results for DICE. Uh, one is going to be an Exodus file that you can look at with ParaView, and the other is comma-separated text files. So if you don't need the text files, you're just going to use ParaView. You can select the emit text output, but we're going to leave it um, not selected so that we can actually see what the text files look like. Here's where you set your filtering settings. Uh, for, these, for this example that we're doing, we're not going to do any filtering. Um, I think that's basically it. If you're interested in, say, a particular uh, point of interest within the domain where you want to know what the solution uh, values are as the um, analysis progresses, you can select this button here and then add uh, points of interest. So there's, um, we're going to get output as the analysis is running at that point there and let's add another point uh, down here. And then we can also do the same thing with um, a line. These are called live plots. So if I want to know starting at the top of the hole and going upward as the analysis is running, we'll get output for um, the field values along that line. You can use this button to reset um, any of the live plot features. If you're only interested in a certain portion of the image, let's say you don't really want to have uh, subsets everywhere, you can add a region of interest uh, and draw a certain region. So in this case, if this part down here is highlighted, this is the only part of the image that's going to get analyzed. If you have something where you need to remove, say, a portion on the inside, you can use this um, exclusion option here to take part out of the inside. Since we're going to look at the whole uh, image from top to bottom, I'm going to go ahead and remove those excluded regions and the, the ROI that we drew. So now we're back to the point where DICE is going to analyze the whole image from top to bottom. Here's your analysis options over here. Uh, the default working directory is going to be uh, called DICE underscore working directory and it's going to go in your home directory. You can also uh, select somewhere else if you want to put the input files and the results files at a different location on your system. Here since we're in the 2D uh, option. This is where you would change from 2D to stereo, etc. Um, the option and the analysis drop down here is run 2D. You can save the working directory and all that does is put the files in your working directory in case you want to come back later, load it up, change some of the options and run the analysis again. If you've got options in there and you want to start from scratch, you can clear the working directory. That won't delete any of the images, but it will get rid of uh, any of the input files or the parameter files that DICE uses to run uh, so that you can start from scratch. So the next uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to run the analysis. It says that there's existing results files. This is because I've loaded DICE before, um, so we're going to go ahead and overwrite those. And what you see popping up here in these um, windows that show up live plot line here this is this is the field values that you've selected so let's go with the y displacement as the analysis 
is running. So you can see that the displacement, this is in terms of pixels, uh, is updating as the analysis is going. Same thing for those two points that we had um, that we had selected. Let's look at the strain here. So it's it's reporting the strain out for every step. We're at step six, and there was roughly 12 images. Uh, so this is how you can tell if something is potentially going wrong with the analysis uh, by looking at these uh, the output here. Uh, there will be files that get created with the uh, XY uh, with the uh, field values in case you want to open it up in some other uh, program and plot the results or put it into a report or things like that. Um, you can look at those files there. Uh, you can see over here that once the analysis is finished, we've got this Exodus file that's output. The solution.info file has all the information about what options were used in the analysis and then a bunch of the text. So this is the for each uh, frame. It's the all the subset um, field values um, in a comma separated value format. So now that the analysis is complete. We've got the green bar over here. We can open up ParaView and take a look at the results. So first I need to go to the folder in my working directory results, click on the .e file that's in Exodus format. First thing I do is I select all the variables. I don't necessarily want to apply the displacements. At this point we can deform the, um, the mesh to show the, the current positions later, but uh, for now I turn that off. Click apply. So here's all the subsets that show up. Um, in order to visualize things a little bit better, I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to use the Delaunay 2D, 2D um, filter, apply that, and you can see that it's covered over the hole in the middle, which is just for a display, it's not really a big deal, but if you want to change that, you can change the alpha to say 20, apply that, and then you lose the those Delaunay uh, triangles that show up over the the hole there. Um, here's where you pick your different fields. Um, for the 2D one, you won't have anything for the stereo uh, displacement and the stereo fields or the model coordinates, model displacement. What you want to look at here is the displacement field if you want displacements. Um, we can look in the Y direction. Here's where we advance to, say, the last frame in the series and reset um, the display. So here's the displacement in terms of pixels. We can also look at things like the, the strain in the YY uh, direction, and you can march through the time series using these buttons above. So that's a quick overview of how to do the 2D version, how to look at the results in ParaView. Um, in other videos, we'll go into some of these different areas in more detail, but hopefully that gives you enough to get started with 2D and DICE. Thanks.